The Naval Academy Museum presents a history of the Navy in 100 objects. We have spent the last few episodes discussing the relatively limited role of the Navy in World War I. With the exception of the Marine Corps' now legendary battles throughout France, the Navy's combat role was generally limited to smaller actions, logistics, escort duty, and mine laying. The real significance of World War I from a naval perspective was that it was the first large-scale implementation of many of the new technological developments that had been ongoing over the previous century. This set the scene for the way that combat would be conducted in the future. Many of these developments and areas of study actually began prior to the Civil War. Polar exploration was no different. Recall in our discussion of the Jeannette Expedition Monument, object number 29, that the Navy and the American public had been fascinated with exploring the world's polar regions since 1839. This fervor continued unabated through the frenzied naval development of the 1890s. While the Navy was transitioning from wood into steel ships, Robert Perry was leading polar expeditions in search of the North Pole, finally arriving in 1909 at what he believed was the geographic North Pole. Perry made a total of eight trips to the North, including three polar attempts over a period of 25 years, and his arrival at the North Pole, the details of which are disputed today, was heralded in 1909 as one of the great feats of exploration of that time. In 1911, two years after Perry's famous journey, Lieutenant John Rogers conducted the first flight of a naval aircraft from the grounds of the Naval Academy. A young midshipman, Richard Byrd, Naval Academy class of 1912, was preparing to graduate when Lieutenant Rogers made that historic flight. Byrd would go on to be part of the first crop of intrepid aviators who would build the Navy's aviation program, and he headed the U.S. aviation efforts in Canada during World War I. But it was in polar exploration that he would really make his mark on the Navy. In 1926, Byrd claimed to have reached the North Pole via airplane. Controversy surrounds this claim, with navigational and calculation error being some of the reasons for doubt. A few days later, an Italian-built airship did complete a flight over the pole, and it is now accepted to be the first to accomplish that feat. Prior to his North Pole attempt, Byrd and a small team attempted to become the first to fly across the Atlantic from New York City to Paris in pursuit of the $10,000 Orteg Prize. Crashing on takeoff, Byrd and his crew were injured. While the team was recuperating from injuries and repairing their damaged craft, Charles Lindbergh made his history-making flight and won the prize, thus thwarting Byrd's efforts. Turning his sights southwards, in 1929, Byrd undertook his first Antarctic excursion. During the trip, Byrd and his team completed a daring flight over the Antarctic ice in order to become the first to fly to the South Pole. Byrd would go on to take four other scientific expeditions to the Pole in later years. Highly decorated for exploration and service, as well as life-saving, he was awarded the Medal of Honor by Congress in recognition of his polar exploits. And now, for a little bit more about our object today, a bronze bust of Rear Admiral Richard Byrd, we go to Jim Cheevers, Senior Museum Curator. Okay, today uh, here in the Naval Academy Museum, uh, we have a bust, a uh, sculptured bust of Richard Evelyn Byrd, Naval Academy class of 1912, and among the best known of our graduates uh, who accomplished a great deal in polar exploration. Uh, and not only uh, the, the, the South Pole, uh, which he's probably most famous for, but also for making the first flight over the North Pole. Uh, I had the honor when I first moved to Annapolis of meeting one of his navigators, Captain uh, Weems. Uh, Captain Weems uh, was a classmate of his here at the Naval Academy, uh, and I remember him in his retirement uh, up the street. Every evening he'd fall out and make readings on his sextant uh, and to keep in, in training. Of course, that's all been replaced today by satellite uh, navigation. But uh, we also have a sextant here on exhibit that belonged to 
uh, Admiral Byrd and, and used in, in his operations. He's among the most uh, decorated Naval Academy graduates. He was given the Medal of Honor by our Congress for his polar uh, endeavors uh, and uh, also many uh, awards by geographical societies over all over the world. Uh, Bird Field Airfield uh, Airport in Richmond, Virginia is named for him because he is a native of Virginia and the famous Bird family uh, from that state. Uh, but we're very proud here of our distinguished graduate, Admiral Richard E. Bird.